Now on Radio 4, it's time for the afternoon drama, a fantastical tale of teenage love and close encounters set in the northeast of England. Imaginary Boys by Paul Mars. Newton Aycliffe, County Durham, 2013. David Taylor was walking home from sixth form college through drifts of orange leaves during the season known as autumn. He was 17 of medium build and height with dark brown hair that needed cutting. His eyes were downcast and dark as stewed tea. He wore a blurred, vague sort of expression as if his thoughts were far away. It was starting to get dark and David kept looking over his shoulder as he hurried back to the council estate where he lived with his female parents. Was he being followed? Why are you following me? David stopped walking and uh, Lawrence almost bumped into him. And will you stop narrating me? Snapped, David. It's driving me mad. I'm sorry about that. You're trying to wind me up? I can assure you I'm not. It's a compliment, really. To have you following me around? Lawrence could see that David was at the end of his tether. Just get lost, will you? Leave me alone. But this is where I'm meant to be. You what? I'm doing my job. It's all to do with you, David. I mean it. Shut up and go away. Sorry if I seemed like a weirdo to you. That is what you think, isn't it? I don't think you're a weirdo. Good. I'm Lawrence. I'm new in town. I know. You've been in my class. Where are you from? Verbatim 6. What? It's a small planet, about 300 light years from here. I'm your novelizer, David. Okay. Bye then. David turned and walked quickly away. I heard that. Where have you been? Your tea's all black in the oven. I'm not really hungry. Here, have one of these. Left you all the soft centres. Have you finished another box? I can't help it. I'll get you some more when I'm in town. You all right? I usually get a lecture about how my cravings are no good for me. I'm fine, ma'am, really. And no one's been picking on you or anything, have they? Or giving you any trouble? No, 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 no nothing because like that. Because if those rough lads are bothering you again... Mum, I'm 17. I can look after myself. Where are you off to now? Up to my room. Oh, yeah. And don't, whatever you do, spend any time with your poor old pregnant mother who's been sat here alone all day. Lawrence watched this unfold from outside. He hadn't been invited in yet. He wasn't close enough to his subject. Not as close as a novelizer needs to be. Through the window, he could see the distended form of the female parent supine upon a settee that was decorated with a floral design. She was fabricating a tiny pair of shoes out of strings of colored twine using two metal rods that made an insistent ticking noise. Then she left the room and walked upstairs. Can I come in? No. What are you doing? Reading poetry. Keats. Ode to Autumn. Oh, yeah? Season of mists and mellow fruitfulness. Close bosom friend of the maturing sun. <laughs> Sounds a bit saucy. Ma'am. Why, you and your poetry. You've had to be the man of the house since your dad went. But you have to be even more so now with a baby nearly here. I know that, Mum. I suppose you'll be swanning off to university soon and I won't see you anymore and... Oh, give it a rest. I'll be home to visit. It's always been me and you, David. Your dad never really fit in, even when he was here. He was always so bound up in his bloody police work. We hardly even noticed him gone last Christmas, did we? It's because we still had each other. Oh, come here. Give your old mum a hug. Oh, I, what is it? Oh, I, I think I'm... I think it's coming, the baby's coming. Are you sure? Oh, David, call an ambulance. You know what happened last time? Oh, it's really, is it? Oh, Are you sure it's not one of your false alarms? Call it, David, now! It was another false alarm. For the third night that month, David and his mum raced to the hospital prematurely. Next day, in the sixth form common room, 
David seemed to be prone to opening his mouth and making sudden, wordless noises. This, Lawrence discovered, was yawning. Then David went off to somewhere called the Boy's Bogs. David? What? It's Lawrence. Can't I get some peace? I wanted to explain something. <laughs> yeah? Well, you can explain why you're following me for a start. It's my job, David. This is what I'm here on Earth to do. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, I'm only in disguise as a new pupil. This isn't who I really am at all. My job is to collect stories and keep a record of interesting lives. I chose you. You chose me? What for? Asked David. And why do you keep on doing that? I have to keep an account of your actions. Oh, I really don't need this right now. Just stay out of my way, OK? All I'm saying is you're 17 now and I don't want you getting caught out like I did. Mum, I'm late for college. You don't know what girls are like. You're right about that. I'm just saying, you've got to watch out. Don't chuck your life away like I did. Thanks. Ignore them. Mum, I'm not going to get caught out. When would I ever get the chance, even if I wanted to? Don't get smart. Who's that knocking at breakfast time? Oh, uh, I'll go. Lawrence! What are you doing here? I want to become closer to you, David. Who is it? It's not religious, is it? I've brought you an offering. Oh, I, I, I don't really want... Here. What is it? It's a journal. You have to write in it. OK. You've always wanted to be a writer, haven't you? These empty pages are for you to fill with all your secrets and dreams and ideas. Right. Thanks. David looked, as he would put it, freaked out. Do I look freaked out? Of course. But you're getting used to me, I think. Can I walk to college with you? Go on then. Hang on, I'll, I'll get my bag. I'm off now, Mum. Are you kiss me goodbye? You know, you should have introduced me to your ma'am. I don't think so. I need to know everything about you. She gave you life, didn't she? She was one of your progenitors. See, that's why I can't introduce you to her. You'll say something like that. Ah. I think I'm beginning to get the hang of life on Earth. Wish I was. David and Lawrence climbed through a broken fence and took a shortcut across the damp playing fields. At college, Lawrence sensed David draw away from everyone else. In his classes, he sat on his own. Do you mind if I sit here? Fine. As long as you don't describe everything I do, said David. Sorry. David had another friend called Robert, who was into wow. bands Great. and was very keen on football, hey, too. Oh, don't look now, Davy boy. But your mate's following you again. Oh, yeah. Do you want me to have a word? Or something a little harder? No, it's okay. He's all right. Lawrence, you can walk with us if you like. What are you doing? He's all right. Just give him a chance. Here we all are, then. Walking home through the dark streets of the estates and the deep autumn leaves and talking about... What are we talking about? Football. And I was telling Davy you should come watch the match down the Tabinia. I can't. I should be getting home for Mum. Oh, come on. You should come down. We'll get leathered. What is leathered? He means drunk. But David is only 17. It would be against human law for him to consume alcoholic beverages. Just forget it. Ah. I can't help noticing that you're dawdling, David. Won't your Mum be worrying? What is it with you two? He's like he's got some sort of hold over you. In the old days, novelizers used to have a literal hold over their subjects, and if anyone tried to escape, their brains would be burned out. Very nasty. Of course, it isn't like that nowadays. What the hell is he on about? Just some science fiction thing. Lawrence is into sci-fi. Oh, he's a geek as well, is he? Fine. I'll uh, leave you to your boyfriend. Shut up. I'm indeed a boy and his friend. What of it? Look... I've got better stuff to do. Uh, see you tomorrow, maybe. Robert, wait. He seems nice. What would you like to talk about? 
Should we continue that very interesting conversation from our English class about Wolf and the Brontes and how every human relationship seems, in your opinion, to be ultimately doomed to failure? No, it's fine. I ought to be getting home. I can walk with you if you'd like. I said it's fine. Bye, Lawrence. Hey, Buggerlugs. Hi. Come and watch Bake Off with your man. No, thanks. What's the matter with you? Oh, I'm just knackered, that's all. Too much coursework and stuff. Stuff? Mm, I thought as much. Is it a girl? No. I know troubles in love when I see them. Come on, David. You can confide in your mum. It's nothing, it's just... What? Dad was... He was your first, wasn't he? Yeah, first and only. And look how that went. Hey, you're not worrying about ending up like him, are you? No, you're more like me than him. You've got my nicer nature. Yeah, so I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you could go back in time, would you? Would you change things? Of course not. No, it was worth going through every moment of those 18 years with that stupid tosser, because out of all of that, I got you, didn't I? <laughs> Thanks, ma'am. Yeah, I think nothing of it. My best years were wasted, my confidence was ruined, and my looks have gone to pot. But you make it all worthwhile, son. It was a few days later that David next saw Lawrence at college. The novelizer had been minding his own business, observing David's world. David found him sitting alone. What are you doing? I thought I would sit here quietly, trying to blend in. I want to ask you something. Have you started writing in your journal yet? No. Um, I've got a free afternoon, so I came to ask you if you wanted it's to... It's important that you start writing quite soon. You've, you've got a lot of work ahead of you, you know. I have an afternoon off. And actually, I was, I was going to ask you if you... Yes? You... What were you going to ask me? If you wanted to come to Darling on the bus with me. There's a place I'd like to show you. I would be delighted, David. Really? Great! David and Lawrence caught the 723 bus to Darlington. In the marketplace, they visited a small shop. David led the way inside as if it was a place of worship. There were pale wooden shelves and a long table in the middle with paperbacks laid out in luridly colourful rows. I brought you here because you like sci-fi. Do I? This bookshop is the best. They're all American remainder copies and, and comics, too. Have you read this? The Grizzly Space Fandango by Penelope Faith Conquest? Some of these illustrated covers are very interesting, David. Or, 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 or this series, The Eternal Mayhem Chronicles by Everard Donat. I've been coming here for years. The being on this one who is strangling the Earth astronaut has a look of my fifth eldest aunt on my female parent's side. What? That was me joking. She has far too few secondary sexual characteristics. <laughs> right. Oh, look. Entrails by Moonlight by Marcia Sopwith. I like finding out what you like. C come and take a look at the paranormal romance section. Some of these are brilliant. What is paranormal romance? It's where people fall in love with unsuitable beings. Vampires, werewolves, shapeshifters and stuff. And usually all goes wrong. I myself am a shapeshifter. Have I told you that? Uh, no. <laughs> I can turn into just about anything. Later, in the cafe next door, David and Lawrence had organic cheese scones and Lady Grey tea, and David talked once more about the futility of human love. I am the only being whose doom no tongue would ask, no eye would mourn. Pardon? Emily Bronte. Ah, yes. A very nice lady. I did some of my early field work in 19th century Yorkshire, probing into the psyches of the Bronte sisters. Right. I guess she was saying that we're, like, all on our own in the end. Novelizers can't stand being on their own. We begin to lose all our faculties if we have no one to observe. I actually think human beings are made to be on their own. 
we're better off solitary. Everyone ends up falling apart otherwise. Look at my mum and dad. And mum and my nana. It, it all goes wrong. Even mum and me have fallen out more lately. Not good examples there, David, since the common denominator is your mam. Might it just be that she causes rows with everyone? She's had a tough time. David was cross whenever Lawrence criticised his mother. I'm all she's got since Dad walked out, just after she told him about the baby. And she had me so young and I owe her so much. She was like 16 and her own mother chucked her out and wouldn't even visit the hospital. I haven't been on planet Earth for very long, but I will venture an opinion. I don't think quite all human relationships are doomed. I feel like mine are. It's like I've grown up wrong, somehow. Lawrence was surprised to hear that. He thought David was probably okay, actually. Thanks. They stopped to look at each other across the table. David's eyes really did look like dark, sweet tea. You know, I think I might fancy you a bit. Is that okay? Lawrence wasn't sure how to react to that. Never said anything like that to anyone before. This was obviously a big moment in David's emotional development. It was most interesting. Right. Well, let's just forget it, shall we? I never said anything. I've made a note of it. Just forget it. That night, David started writing in the journal Lawrence had given him. Maybe now is when things start to happen. I feel like my whole body knows something. Perhaps I should write this in cipher. I know Mum goes through my stuff when she's bored. And if you're reading this, Mum, don't try and deny it. I met this boy called Lawrence. He says he comes from a world called Verbatim Six and that he chose me. The next evening, Lawrence the Novelizer was following David home as usual, looking forward to another of their chats. Oi! But then he saw David get stopped by an older boy called Simon Granger. <laughs> And his spotty mate, whose name David never knew. Wait, wait, you're not looking at this? They were bored and dizzy after an afternoon spent drinking oh, a local yeah, beverage known as White Lightning. <laughs> yeah, it's that posh kid. Yeah, you. Yeah, you. <laughs> David tried to move past them, but they planted themselves either side of him. Excuse me. <laughs> Listen to his manners. He sounds like a puff. The spotty friend laughed at this. Lawrence stood watching from the top of the hill. Oh, whoops! Oh, look, have you slipped on the leaves? That's Leave me alone! <laughs> David was suddenly on the ground. <laughs> now, where's your boyfriend today, then? Oh, do you... He's not my boyfriend, he's just a mate. Oh. Lawrence realised they were talking about him. <laughs> now, listen, you ought to watch out, because we don't have any queers around here. David was lying on the ground. <laughs> they oh, kicked on, then, him, Stop it, Tom, and they I'm spat on him. All the shouted words were blending into one. Faggot. Put. Queer. And then they both turned and ran away. Lawrence came to join his subject. David's face was bleeding. David, I saw what happened. You all right? Why didn't you do something? I am a novelizer. I can't get involved. I can only watch and narrate. You can only... Piss off, Lawrence. Leave me alone. When David returned home, his mam was so shocked by the state of him, she went and phoned David's dad. I know you don't want to see him. Neither do I. He made both our lives a misery. Then why did you phone him? He's a copper. He's got power. He can get them, those animals that did this to you. I'm all right. Phone him again and say we don't need him. You're not all right. Look at you. J just cuts and bruises. You were lucky to get away. And where was that friend of yours, eh? That so-called best pal. Robert? No, the other one. Lawrence? He... <sighs> 
didn't want to fight. He was... Yeah, well, some pal he turned out to be. It wasn't his fault. That'll be your dad. I've got to get changed. Answer it, will you? Why are you getting changed? I want to show him what he's missing. What? Just answer the door, will you? Dad. Long time no see. David. God, look at you. What the hell happened? I've been beaten up. I can see that. Can I come in? I guess. When your mum phoned the station, she was lucky to get me. I should literally be in Sunderland right now. It's a nasty shiny you're gonna have there, son. We can yeah, sit in the front room. There's not much to make a statement about. Young thugs can't go around attacking people like that. I, I understand that's what's happened. It was unprovoked, yeah. They got me on the way home from school. Did they say anything? Nothing. Just laid into me. And do you know who they are? Simon Granger and some mate of his. They left school last year. I see. Uh, there was a, a lad hanging about outside the house when I pulled up. What? A blonde lad. Oh, that's just Lawrence. He wasn't involved. OK. <clears throat> now, you're going to tell me the details slowly and I'll write them down and then yourself can sign it and we'll see about getting these lads picked up tonight, all right? I'll get them. They can't do this to you, not to my son. They already have. This wouldn't have happened if I was still here. I could have... It would have happened anyway. I could have taught you better how to stick up for yourself. I should have... Oh, there you are. Mary. Have you seen what those scumbags have done to your son? Yeah, well, I'll sort it out. You look nice, Mary. Me? I'm in my rags and I'm huge. The important thing here is David, your son. Have you forgotten about him, eh? You've not seen him since before Christmas, not so much as a card. Uh, look, Mary, I've, I've got to get this statement done. Oh, and then... you get on and do what you have to do. I remember all your bloody procedures and paperwork. Nothing ever changes with you, does it? David made his statement to his dad. He watched as his words were changed, simplified, misspelled. And his mam sat there in her most glamorous maternity frock. And you, Mary, you, you must be uh, close to time now. Yes. Well, you, you let me know, won't you? When the baby comes. Will do. I could be there. I'll let you know, if you're that interested. Just finish taking his statement and go, would you? Lawrence, the novelizer, waited outside, waited until the policeman left and drove off. Ah, hello, Mrs Davids, ma'am. I'm Lawrence. Oh, so this is the friend who didn't help, is it? Mum, it's fine. Come on, Lawrence. Oh, that was awful. I was interested to see your male parent. Will you look like that when you are older, balding and blotchy? Just shut up, Lawrence. Don't even know why I'm still talking to you. But I'm glad you are. Tell me more about your reunion with your male parent. This is a very significant moment. He wanted to know what names they were shouting at me. Not how I was doing at college, or how Mum and I are doing without him, just what words they chose to use when they beat the crap out of me. And what was I going to say? Huh? Puff? Queer? Did you? What do you think? He seemed like a nice man. No, he didn't. Then he said, he said that I, I... What? He said I needed a proper man's influence in my life. That I'd been missing having him around all year and that it was doing me harm. Is that true? Do you miss him? I don't know. Not really. But I end up actually feeling guilty because I haven't been in touch with him either, have I? I agreed to go out on Saturday with him to the shops. You were going to spend quality time with your male parent? He's offered to help me choose a suit for my university interviews. You don't look very pleased about this. <sighs> I just want to die. 
I'll come with you, if you like. When I die? I meant in the car with your dad. No. To the shops? Absolutely not. On Saturday? No. I've never been in a police car before. It's not a police car. It's a Mondeo. What do you think of this suit I'm wearing, David? Very smart, yeah. I, I, I thought we'd get something like it for yourself. Great. David's dad would use the word yourself instead of you. It sounded strangely formal and oblique. What's your friend saying back there? He often talks to himself. Don't you, Lance? I don't mind bringing him along, even though it's literally the only time we've had together in months. Thanks. Your, your mother's looking well. I hope you'll both cope. Just the two of yous. We can manage. Uh, it's not fair on a young lad like yourself, though, is it? It's okay. Well, I, I would have stayed, you know. For the little one and, and for you as well. It, it's just... Uh, what? It's just what, well, Dad? It, it would have been worse if I'd stayed. You know that, me and your mum. You know, it, it, it just couldn't go on like that. Well, it's better now. <laughs> That's how you feel, is it? But it is, isn't it? Your life is better too. Away from Mum. Aye. You'll be away soon as well, won't you? Which universities are you applying to? Lancaster, York, Middlesbrough. Ah, well, you, you look the part in your new suit. Well, I could drive you there, do the interviews and stuff. Yeah. Or what Dad's for. No, what you want is something that will last for years. Quality, not something trendy. I suppose. David's dad's favourite menswear shops weren't appealing to David very much. Well, you needn't spend a fortune to look stylish and smart. Are you listening, son? But David had seen someone. Oh, no. Isn't that your mate? Uh, Robert! Uh, go and talk to him, David. He's waving you over. Robert Wolfe was hanging around with some girls. Davy! <laughs> you remember my dad? Mr Taylor? Hello there, Robert. And what are you up to, then? Shouldn't you be at football practice? Now, I remember yourself being a smashing centre-forward at one time. Do you still play? A bit, when I can. I was just getting David kitted out with some new gear. Gear? And what about his pal? Are you kitting him out as well? Everyone turned <laughs> to look at the noveliser. That's Lawrence. He's uh, David's friend. Aye, I know. He's a friend. Look, can we just go now? Aye, he's, he's just in a bad mood. You could hang up with us if you wanted, Davy. David is going to the Terrace Cafe for high tea with his father and his friend Lawrence. That is what is going to happen. Uh, <laughs> right. Go on then. Do what you want. Come on, girls. You should be nicer to him. He's just a, a pleasant, normal lad. David didn't look convinced. Would you stop butting in, son? Leave him alone. Look, I tell you what you've got to learn to do better, David, and that's mixing in more. There's all types of people in this world. Now, don't be getting ideas about yourself. Can we... Can we just go home now? Look, before you go, um, did they really call yourself a puff? Who? Your assailants. I mean, they, they've admitted in their own statements that they used terms of homophobic abuse and all that. Look, son, you, you, you can tell your dad anything. If yourself has anything to say... I've nothing to say. It was like a police interrogation. I'm, I'm just asking. OK. Because if yourself has any worries on that score, they're, they're wrong. Those lads, you're, you're just sensitive and clever, like your mum used to be. I mean, it doesn't make yourself a, a homosexual or anything. Yeah, you needn't worry. You can still be a normal lad. You what? Well, I, I don't think you've grown up wrong and perverted. I, I really don't. Oh. OK. Thanks. Bye, Dad. 
Vai den son. I think I prefer your female parent. You're not the only one. Still, that night was the night David's female parent went into the throes of the state known as labour. What? <sighs> Mum, what's happening? What do you think's happening? <sighs> Lawrence, the novelizer, was quite correct in his assessment of the situation. <sighs> Lawrence, just stop. Mum! <sighs> You've been too busy running around with that pig of your father. Oh, God. Can you phone an ambulance? I couldn't find the cordless, ah, oh, bloody thing on my mobile. W w will it get you in time? <laughs> Mum! David's mother was hauling herself onto the settee with her legs up. Her waters had apparently broken. Her knitting was ruined. Oh, your father spoiled oh, both our lives. Oh, I hate bloody men. Don't just stand there, David. For a second, he couldn't move. He couldn't even think straight. David, Manny, it's going to happen right now. Oh, what did he say about me? Uh, your so-called father. Oh, slagging me off, I suppose. What do I do? Oh, did he buy you anything? Oh, oh shut up about Dad. He doesn't matter. He's useless. Oh, oh. Hot water and clean towels. That's what we need. Lawrence wasn't sure what you did with them. Neither was David. C can you wait until the ambulance comes? Oh. And shouldn't you be doing your special breathing or something? What bloody special breathing? It was getting very noisy in their sitting room by now. This won't wait for the ambulance. David was worried oh. in case it was like the boy who cried wolf and the paramedics had stopped believing Oh, her. Lawrence, shut up. Stop saying stupid stuff and just help me. Right, boil the kettle and I'll fall. I shouldn't interfere. I'm not supposed to. Just do it. You have to help me. You can't just stand there. You don't understand. I, I do. You're scared. I'm scared, but you have to help. But novelizers aren't supposed to get involved. You saw me. I just stood there, didn't I, when they hit you and kicked you? It doesn't matter now. I tried so hard not to get involved. Ah, hurry up! It's true. It's really true. It's, it's really going to happen. She is going to give birth to another person, yes, a smaller one. Maybe it'll take ages. They, they, they sometimes do, don't they? Maybe the ambulance will have time to get here. <sighs> Oh, I wish I'd bothered with more of them classes now. I thought I'd remember everything from last time. That was 17 years ago. Do your breathing. You popped out as easy as anything. Mum, you have to remember your breathing. I can't. Do it. Mum, look, I don't know what to do. <sighs> Lawrence, I've got a... What do I do? Stand back, David. What are you doing? I'm taking off my school tie and I'm rolling up the sleeves of my shirt. But what are you going to... I'm getting involved. I'm going to die. No, you're not. Can you push? I don't know. I'll have to take my pants off. Let me help. Oh, God. <laughs> He's your friend. It's fine. More than that, really. Yes, more than that. I'm his novelizer. What? Never mind that. It's about time I told you, Mum. Ah! I'm, I'm, I'm... Can we leave this till later? Breathe, Mrs. <laughs> David's ma'am. I'm gay, Mum. What? Push. I think. I believe this isn't the time for pushing. Did you hear, Mum? Did you hear what I said? I'm gay. I already knew. Oh! At the hospital, David and Lawrence found a coffee machine and drank soupy lattes. What if she's not all right, Lawrence? She will be. What if they both die and it's all my fault? Do you want to hear how novelizers are born on verbatim six? Not especially. We begin as the merest inkling. And then someone says, listen. Shy. Say hello to your baby sister. Wow, she has really long feet. She's amazing. Thanks for your help, boys. I'm sorry it was so fraught. David was entranced by the baby. Her black scrap of hair, her red fists, which were punching the air like in triumph. I'm calling her Catherine. After your nana. Even though I hate the woman woman. <laughs> it's lovely. Yeah, have a hold. Don't be scared. She's heavy. Tell me about it. <laughs> Greetings, small human. Greetings from Vivatum 6. <laughs> What's he like? He's hilarious. I texted Dad just so he knows. I wish you hadn't. Any reply yet? Not yet. But he's probably at work. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he'll come by later. I'm not sure I want him to. 
Look at her. Look at Catherine. He's missing all of this. He walked out. We've got our own lives to get on with, and you've got yours too, with your university stuff. If I can wait, I- I'll-, I'll take a gap year or something. Stay and help with the baby. Don't you dare. I might be what they call an older mother, but I'm not geriatric. We'll see. It's your life, David. You have to make sure you live it. Is this the gas and air talk? I mean it. You do what you want to do with your life, and if you do, I'll feel like I've done a good job of bringing you upright. Um, I think I'll wait outside. I already knew about you, you know. Oh, right. About being a puff. Let's talk about it later. I like him, the daft lad. Your boyfriend. <laughs> well, that's what he is, isn't he? I mean, he's a bit odd, I suppose, the way he goes on. But... Well, he's not really my, my I boyfriend. I think he is. You know? Now go on. Take him home and get some rest. Thanks, Mum. As they left the hospital and went out into the cold to catch the early morning bus, Lawrence was dwelling on the thought that he was now far too close to his subject. Boyfriend. It was a strange word. Wrong, somehow. But nice. Nicer than novelizer. Oh, you've got a little sister. I know. It's amazing. Still, your planet is horribly overpopulated. I hope your mother puts a stop to her reproductive urges oh, now. Can't you drop the space act? The what? The space act. Seeing you're from space, it's like a neurotic thing. A way of deflecting attention somehow away from who you really are. But this is who I really am. Oh, if you, you can't be serious I about am anything. Serious? It, this is as serious as it gets. No, it isn't. Come here. Oh. Wow. That was my first kiss. I've, I've never... Yes, um... Is that all you have to say about it? Um... You! You're never lost for words. You never shut up. Now look at you. Uh, yes. Is that it? Lawrence realised that they had crossed a line. This had gone too far. What are you on about? Come with me, David. There's something I want you to see. What are we doing out here? Come on, and don't ask questions. It's the crack of dawn, Lawrence. Maybe it was a mistake that the novelizer had been seized by this sudden mad impulse. When you said you had something to show me, Shh. this is secret. There's nothing here. I'm going to prove to you once and for all who and what I am. You don't have to. You're Lawrence. That's all I need to We've know. We've gone this far. I might as well show you everything. Lawrence, it's fine. I don't need... David stared at the rainbow lights at the heart of the waste ground. What is it? My spacecraft. It's been hiding in hyperspace. Sort of tangential to this dimension. You see here, but not here. I thought it was time to show you. What do you think? I, I, I don't know what to say. I used to know the future. I thought I knew how you'd react. It's... Magnificent. They're quite common, where I come from. But this one, this one is mine. It's opening up. Does that mean you're... I don't know how things are going to turn out anymore. For the first time ever, I don't know the end of the story. Will you come with me, David? Where to? Into space. It's all true. Everything I said. I come from your future. I fell in love with your books. My books? They were why I came to this place to find you. All this way. I was meant to just observe, but then I changed things and we kissed and now... Will you come with me? 
Do I write books? W w what are they called? I can't tell you. But w w what do I write about? All kinds of things. Time, friendship, love, how to keep people together, learning to love them. And you want me to leave Earth? Will you? Lawrence, my family need me. I've got a new sister and, and a mum who gets panic attacks when she can't get a supermarket trolley through the revolving doors in town. And I write books, do I? And I get... I, I get published. I've said too much already. We shouldn't even really be in the same story. I used to know how it all worked out. The future was set. But I got too involved. I do want to go with you, Lawrence, but I can't. I've got to stay here. I've got stuff to do in this world. But you can write in space. Just think what you might see out there. I have to stay for Mum and Catherine. Besides, you said you loved my books. If I'm not there to write them, then you'll never read them. And you won't come back to see me, will you? We'd never have met. I told you I'd messed things up. <laughs> Everything's changed. Do you know what? I reckon it all changed when you first gave me that journal. I made you want to write. You did. Mission accomplished, I reckon. But I was sent just to observe, not to change your life. But you have. You've changed it forever, I think. It's only been a couple of weeks. Maybe that's enough. Will you come back? One day? If I can. I will. I promise. Goodbye, David. Goodbye, Lawrence. I'm really going to miss you. And thank you. For what? You've read my books. You tell me. When I turned 17, I didn't really know who I was or what I might become. And then, all of a sudden, I did. I knew exactly who I was. And I knew who it was I was writing for. And I knew that when he read it, he would love my story. In Imaginary Boys, David was played by James Baxter, and Lawrence by Geoffrey Breton. Mam was played by Jill Halfpenny, Dad by Daniel Brocklebank, and Robert by Liam Dascom. Imaginary Boys was written by Paul Mars and is a BBC Cymru Wales production directed by Scott Hancock.